what we wanted to do when I bought my Mac Studio was to get a monitor. It had been basically the first time that I'd been in the monitor market for more than 10 years. I did have a couple of monitors sticking around, but they were quite old, probably very inefficient on the energy side of things. So I wanted to get something much more modern. So I went online. Uh, eventually, I ended up on a monitor which was the Dell U2722DE. The great thing about this monitor is that this monitor had a range of ports built into it. So you can see here it's a 27 inch monitor. The resolution of this monitor is the QHD resolution and it's an IPS panel and it's got a range of ports. And this is the interesting thing is the ports that are actually on the back of the monitor. You could buy this instead of what maybe a Cal digit or something like that. So let's have a look and see what the ports are. We can see that we've got power ports, display ports, HDMI, uh, USB-C, USB-A, Ethernet, and uh, a couple of others. And there's powered ports in there as well. So. This makes it a very interesting monitor, so stick around and I'll go through everything right now. So here is a video of me with the monitor. And as you see, it's connected to a Mac Studio on the left hand side. It's on a stand that is able to rotate the monitor as well as go up and down. And there's a quite a lot of flexibility with how you might want to use this monitor. So here I'm going to show you the, the rear of the screen plugged into my Mac Studio. Now the stand starts with a cable uh, hider. It basically goes from the front to the back, so it helps you route cables. There's a visa mount on the back, and obviously it's a Dell monitor. Looking at the back of my Mac Studio, you can see the cable connectors right there. In here, we have a cable, this black one there, and that is actually going to the monitor itself. It's the only cable between the monitor and the computer. The other cables you see here, there's an ethernet cable, the power cable, and there are two USB-A ports that I've got an additional hub on it. And I have, I can't remember what the other thing is. Oh yes, I've got the camera that is being spoken into right now is on the other one. So that's leading into a cam link 4K just in case you really want to know. So we come around to the back of the monitor and this is what the view of it looks like. It's very neat, but of course normally we'd be looking at the front of the monitor. But the interesting thing is that it's the back of the monitor that really makes this monitor well worth investigating. The power cable is here. There's an HDMI connector. Now I haven't been using the HDMI connector and it's this Thunderbolt port that is the cable coming from the Mac Studio that's connected into this monitor. Of course, as I say, if you've got a Mac Mini, it would be the same. If you've got a MacBook Pro with Thunderbolt out, you'd be connecting to this port as well. And you'll see in a moment why that is. So we've got HDMI underneath here. We've got a normal wide display port there, and we've got the Thunderbolt port leading up and out from this point here. So coming around the back of the monitor, we can see that there are a number of other ports. And the first one obviously is the one that we've just come from. This is the Thunderbolt port that comes directly from your Mac, whether that's a Mac Studio like my own, and it's a Thunderbolt out port of which there are four on the back of the original M1 Mac Studio. You could be connecting to a Thunderbolt port from one of the Mac Minis or, of course, from a MacBook Pro if you've got a Thunderbolt port out from there. This provides a 90 watt power recharging functionality to your MacBook Pro. You can charge your MacBook Pro from this monitor. It is, however, of course, still the connector that you would use if you're using a non-chargeable device like a Mac Mini or a Mac Studio. On the right hand side of that, we have a display port that is actually blocked off. 
Now the blocking off means that uh, they don't want you to automatically plug into that. The display port that you would use if you're using a display port connector is just hidden behind the post of the stand. This display port here is if you are going to daisy chain several monitors together using the display port functionality. So this is only for connecting to directly another monitor. I'm sure there are several Dell model monitors that you can connect to in a daisy chain like this. Next to that there's another blocked off port and this is a USB-C port. The reason they've blocked that one off is because they don't want you plugging in your Thunderbolt cable and expecting to see a display. This is the display port Thunderbolt input. The USB-C input here is for data only. It does not carry display data so it will only allow you to carry data itself. Next to that we've got three ports that are marked here. They are your normal USB ports. They are fast ports for your data. There's a audio out connector here, three and a half mil jack. And I'm using that myself with some connected loudspeakers and that works really well. Finally, there is an ethernet port here. So you could maybe not have an ethernet cable plugged into your Mac, but plug it into here and the data will still travel down this magical cable, which we all know as Thunderbolt. Here we have the underside of the ports. Here's the ethernet port. We've got three USB-A ports with high speed. There is your three and a half mil jack for your audio out where you might connect speakers. This is not a port that you would connect up headphones to. And then we've got the Thunderbolt cable here coming directly from the Mac that you're going to be connecting. And there's the half of a display port available there. And then of course the two ports that I've said are blocked off. So now what we'll do is we'll move to the underside of the monitor. As you look at the monitor on the left hand side, there are two additional ports. And these are both high power charging ports as well as fast data ports. So you could potentially connect a external hard drive, for instance. If you've got a fast hard drive, you can connect your hard drive to either of these and you'll get fast data as well. You'll also see that this port has a battery and that's a fast charging port if you've got a USB-A device that you want to use to charge quickly on that side. So they're both underneath the monitor on the left hand side as you look at the front of the monitor. And here are two of those ports full. Uh, I'm charging with both of those a little device on either side. So that is how that all works. So that's really the way that my Mac setup is at the moment. Now, you may have seen another device in the back of the Mac Studio, which was a Lunar Display Connector. If you want to see more about that, keep an eye on the channel, subscribe to it, and you'll see when my Lunar Display review comes out. The Lunar Display is allowing me to use my iMac as a secondary display. So I didn't have to throw it away, I didn't have to sell it for a, a silly price. And the brilliant display that I've got on my 10 year old iMac is still being used today. Plus there's other advantages that I'll tell you about in the Lunar Display video. Make sure you subscribe to be notified when that one comes out. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to helping you again soon. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Bye.